How would you react if you see Michelangelo's Pieta? How would you react? Well, Americans, I think, would exclaim, Wow! Right? Wow! Yeah. <laughs> the Italians, I think, would mouth the words, Magnifico! <laughs> Filipinos would say, Selfie! Selfie! <laughs> Selfie, I would like to take a selfie of us. I'm really serious because I want. Okay. But you know, taking selfies can be fatal. Allow me to show you this woman who loves her selfies. Woman is not from IGSL. <laughs> this morning I'm going to talk about being responsible when it comes to using our social media, not reckless. But we have to see that social media is a tool, not a toy. You know, Christians before tend to be suspicious of technology. Like there was a time I heard that the Christians rejected radio 
Because Satan is the prince of the power of the air. <laughs> Actually, I was trying to look for a verse for this uh, topic and I realized that the Bible allows us to use the internet because the Lord said, cast the net on the right side. <laughs> but seriously, you know some statistics. One of every, one of three Filipinos cannot live without cell phones. You would almost have an, a, you would almost have a heart attack. Once you realize you left your cell phone. In fact, in our poorest households, there were at least one phone available. In fact, we valued the phone so much that according to our health secretary, we have more Filipinos with mobile phones than those with functional toilets. 84% of households own a mobile phone while only 70% have improved toilet facilities. And in the latest study by Digital Report, which is usually released annually by the global agency We Are Social, um, according to them in the latest Digital 2019 report, the Philippines, of course the Philippines, trapped other countries in internet use via any device, mobile, iPad, laptop, with 10 hours and 2 minutes average time spent. Brazil, 9 hours, 29 minutes. Thailand, 9 hours and 11 minutes. Philippines, 10 hours and 2 minutes average time spent. And we have a bragging right. We also retain our title of being the social media capital of the world with an average of 4 hours and 12 minutes spent, a 15 minute increase compared to last year's figures. In fact, with over 100, according to my notes here, with over 107 million Filipinos as the base of the study, 76 million or roughly 71% of the population are now internet users and active social media users with at least one account. At least one account. But always remember what the Chinese have a saying, no? I think it was from Confucius, chapter 5, verse 3. He said, what has the power to heal also has the power to kill. What has the power to heal also has the power to kill. It is ironic that we are the most connected generation and yet we are the most disconnected. Now, either, according to Rick Warren, when it comes to conforming to the world, we have at least three responses. Number one, we isolate. We refuse to be part of this world. Number two, we imitate. We become like the world. But Rick Warren said we should insulate. Like for example, a tuna spent all its life swimming in the ocean, the salt water, and yet when you have to eat sashimi and sushi, you have to dip it in kikoman soy sauce because it is bland. In fact, it spent so much time, all, almost all of its life, swimming in salt water and yet it did not affect it. That's why we have to look at social media as a stewardship. To whom much is given, much is required. I remember um, I saw this post regarding a pastor, he was bashed online because he posted that people kept on giving him money. This church teaches prosperity gospel. And so every time he would mention, hey, this woman, I, 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 ran, I bumped into her in the mall. She introduced herself and she gave me money. Hashtag, sarap magpastor, it's good to be a pastor. And then he would mention this person that kept on giving her, him money and he said, hashtag, sarap maging pastor. And getting frustrated when I saw it on the 80s Facebook page. And an agnostic told me, he said, you know, pastor, what you could do is that you post what you're doing as a pastor. And you visit the hospital, when you, when you pray for the sick, when you preach, and then use the same hashtag. In other words, hijack the hashtag. So that when people use that, they will see you or other pastors that you would encourage to use the hashtag instead of that pastor. And that's why most of you are my friends on Facebook. You see, hashtag happy pastor. But you have to remember this, that even the way we use um, social media will be accountable to the Lord for that. Because it says here, I tell you, let's read this together, one, two, go. I tell you, on the day of judgment, people will give account for almost all careless words they speak. 
It says here, every careless word they speak. And it reveals a lot about us what we post on Facebook. It says here, for out of the abundance of the heart, his mouth speaks. Well, we have seen that funny video, but you know, the problem with social media, we tend to live, a, we, we tend to portray online a fake version of ourselves. There's this video, are you living an insta life? And so we have to ask, are we living an insta life or an insta lie? I asked my son, how do I lose weight? And my son said, well, it's easy, Dad. You, you just convert kilogram to Instagram. <laughs> According to Eric Wallman, the author of Socialnomics, which was the book of the year last 2010, he said, we don't have a choice on whether we do social media. The question is how well we do it. And I came up with an acronym, Bridge. That's why the title is Build a Bridge, Not a Barrier. And uh, I will be talking about Ephesians 4, 25 to 32. In verse 1 of chapter 4, it says, I therefore, a prisoner for the Lord, urge you to walk in a manner worthy of the calling to which you have been called. Simply put, the challenge is that our conduct on social media should be worthy of our calling as Christians. Our conduct as Christians on social media should correspond to our calling from the Lord. Remember Ephesians, wealth, walk, warfare, call, conduct, conflict. We are now at chapter 4 that we are now responding to our call before the Lord. First, letter B stands for be truthful. Be truthful. 
In this world of social media, of fake news, in this world of fake news, we have to stand for the truth. Verse 25 says, Therefore, having, been, having put away falsehood, let each one of you speak the truth with his neighbor, for we are members one of another, that when we lie, we hurt not only our reputation, when we share fake news, we're not only affecting our reputation, we're also affecting the church, because we are members one of another. Time and again, I see people post uh, on Facebook, uh, like Christians would post this, that they finally found the <coughs> skeleton of Goliath. But a simple Google, like for example, snopes.com, although it has some liberal leaning, but still it's a good resource, it would tell you that if you fact check this, this is not an actual skeleton. Now of course some people would say, do not argue on Facebook, no, because they post this. I called you to win souls, not to win arguments. But I disagree. We are to win the soul, not just the debate. It is not either win the soul or win the debate. It is both win the soul and win the debate because we destroy arguments and have to every lofty opinion raised against the knowledge of God and we are to take every thought captive to obey Christ. But of course, not just correcting people who are sharing fake news, but of course we have to check our motives. Somebody wrote, even when our posts are grounded in truth, our heart attitude in sharing that truth is key. Is it about me and my need to be right? Is the Lord being glorified? And so if we want to be responsible in our use of social media, we have to be truthful. Second, we have to respond, not react. Letter R, respond, not react. Okay, let's review, no? Letter B, be truthful. Letter R, Respond, not react. We are to refrain from a combative stance on Facebook. We are to help people to think. We are not supposed to post when we have help, no? Hungry, when we are help. Hungry, angry, lonely, and tired. Because according to Ephesians chapter 4, be angry and do not sin. Do not let the sun go down on your anger and give no opportunity to the devil. Somebody asked me, what if, Pastor, I'm angry during the night? I said, Diva Sabe, do not let the sun go down on your anger. So at least I have the whole night to be angry. And I told the person, no, no, do not let the sun go up on your anger. <laughs> we can be angry. We, can, we, can, we, 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 can, we, we have this initial reaction when we see a post. Usually, fake news would provoke you. Like, this is not something shared by the mainstream media or they would appeal to your pride and say, I dare you to post this, or share if you want to be blessed. <laughs> but we have to be careful. Let's not be emotional. Refrain from a combative stance on Facebook or Twitter or Instagram or whatever social media platform you are using. Somebody wrote, emotional responses on social media are dangerous. And here's why. Emotional moments tend to produce responses that are not reflective of who we are. And the moment we click post or hit send, the world has access to our words. Remember, when it's in the internet, it's forever. Do not allow your emotions to override your good judgment. I've been into a lot of discussion on Facebook. I, I, actually, my doctor told me that that's one of the reasons why I have my decor vein syndrome. Decor vein means I overuse my hand. It's a texter's thumb, gamer's thumb, Blackberry thumb, and he said that I actually uh, hurt my hand by, by texting or reacting on Facebook. And so I'm telling you, if you don't want something like this, don't react, respond. Now when I feel angry, I wait for a minute or two. If I'm very angry, I'll wait for the next day before I would respond to anyone. It's very hard, it's very hard. Like for example, the other day, uh, a few weeks ago, I'm sorry, a few weeks ago, I reacted on a news item. I usually ignore uh, most of the news, especially showbiz news, but there's one showbiz news that I could not take, so I responded. I just asked a simple question. Is this really news? And then I went on my usual business as a pastor, and then during the night, my relatives were calling me, Eric, you are being bashed online. And I saw the long thread of people attacking me, taking pictures of my wife, taking pictures of my, my granddaughter. 
And I'm too tired, I said, this is not worth it. And so I just deleted my comments. Very hard. And if I responded, I think I will not be able to sleep that night. And that's why, if, uh, react, don't, don't, um, um, don't uh, allow yourself to be carried away by the hot button issue. Think through and concentrate on major issues. Concentrate on major issues. Focus on issues, not personalities. As we are commanded in Ephesians 4.29, let no corrupting talk come out of your mouths. I am embarrassed when I see pastors and fellow Christians insult another believer for a theological reason, an issue, or political issue. Be reminded by the Bible with your tongue. We bless our Lord and Father. We did we curse people who are made in the likeness of God. From the same mouth come blessing and cursing. And my brothers, these things ought not to be so. With our fingers, we bless our Lord and Father. With our fingers, we curse people who are made in the likeness of God. As Christians, we're supposed to be logical as followers of the Logos. We're supposed to be reasonable and respectful on Facebook. Because ako, I mean, when I debate on Facebook, I'm not just thinking of the person I'm debating with. I'm looking at the people who's observing the debate. We have to avoid fallacies or wrong argumentations like we have an, you know, like an ad hominem attack, meaning that you would attack your opponent instead of his argument. Or we, we question the hypocrisy of that person, we, we bring, bring up the hypocrisy of that person. That's the tokoke fallacy. As Christians, we are to learn to focus, be reasonable, be, 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 be respectful. Because you know, if you may not win a person with your reason, you will win the person with your candor, with your conduct, with, with the way you respected the person in the debate. And of course, we, also, we should always show concern for the person. We should dedicate to build up. Help them to think. Explain it patiently to them. The issues, like right now, I, I mentioned about, I was talking on Facebook about the latest rise tarification law, and I talked about uh, what happened before in the oil the regulation uh, law many years ago. And I was trying to explain to people so that they would be informed because maybe they were reacting that way because they were not informed of the issues. We are commanded that we should only, well, let no corrupting talk come out of our mouths, but only such as is good for building up as fits the occasion that it may give grace to those who hear. Like, just a few days ago, I had this debate with a believer who was so insensitive because he posted this. No Christian will ever commit suicide. So I stop asking if a Christian will go to heaven if he commits suicide. And to address this, I told him, bro, that's very insensitive. Remember the people whose loved ones died of suicide and you are pouring the proverbial, proverbial salt on their wound. You have to be careful. You should show concern. You should always think of the impact of your words. Somebody wrote, Social media distances us from the impact of our words. We could say things and then walk away from our keyboard, being blind to how others react to them. And if we are saying things that aren't words we would say in front of someone's face, then we shouldn't say them. And so we should dedicate to build up. Let's again review. Letter B, be fruitful. Letter R, Letter I, letter D, letter G, grieve not the spirit, grieve not the spirit. Because it says here in Ephesians 4.30, and do not grieve the Holy Spirit of God, by whom you were sealed for the day of redemption. And how do we grieve the Holy Spirit? When we, when we let bitterness, wrath, anger, clamor, and malice grow in our hearts, that's why we're commanded, let all bitterness and wrath and anger and clamor and slander be put away from you along with all malice. No? Sa Tagalog, how do you know may malice? Mas Tagalog no malice? O lagi na lang siyang mali, kaya may mali siya. <laughs> now, before responding to a post that, you, that has you riled up, perhaps somebody said, the best thing you can do is walk away and take a breather before writing a response. There are some people who, would, who are actually paid trolls on the internet. 
especially when you talk about political issues. And trolls want attention. They want to provoke. And then when you react, they would say, Can you back Christian? Is that the way a Christian should respond? He should respond. And then you'll get angry and you'll react. And they're very happy because every time you comment, they will be paid for that. Trolls want attention. They want to provoke. If you don't respond, you're effectively taking away their power over you. And that's why grieve not the Holy Spirit. Lastly, exemplify the character of the Lord. When you conduct yourself on social media, we are to be kind to one another, tender-hearted, forgiving one another, as God in Christ forgave you. Of course, there are times you have to unfollow, unfriend, or even block toxic people. But that's, that should be a rare case. You have to remember that these people, they may be vicious online, they're actually gentle offline. I have met some of them personally. And I realize these people are just hiding behind the anonymity of the social media. But if you really get to know them, they're reasonable people. And that's why somebody said we can point people to Jesus with the light of our lives, with eternal truth, and with grace-filled interactions because people are watching. There's a young lady who was caught on video shouting at a female security guard. She would get so offended by the way the guard treated her that she was shouting at her, I'm a liar, I'm a liar, I'm a liar. And she got bashed on Facebook, on, on Twitter, and, and, and she said that during those times she thought of committing suicide. But Paula Salvosa read through the comments. By the way, she was known as the I'm a liar. Huh? And then she saw one post that says, I'm praying for you. God's grace be with you. And then she got in touch with some believers, and now she's a missionary. A Christian missionary talking about um, online security, a Christian missionary who encourages others who were bashed. I even saw her comment when that boy in one exclusive school was bashed for being a bully. No, we don't realize, no, we bullied the bully. We should engage gracefully. Because we should be truthful, we should respond and react, we should focus on issues, not personalities, we should dedicate to build up on social media, help people to think, we should grieve not the Holy Spirit, and we should exemplify the character of the Lord. As we were reminded in Ephesians 5, 15 to 16, look carefully then how you walk, not as unwise, but as wise, making the best use of the time, because the days are evil. They're called by God to build a bridge and not a body. What's the bridge again? B. R. I. D. G. And E. The next sermon will have barrier as the points. No, no, just kidding. I prayed that we would build a bridge. Now, I was, this morning I was reading on Facebook, I saw a quote from Keller, and he said that if your identity is in your work and not in Christ, then your success will go to your head, and your failure will go to your heart. And then I was, as I was thinking about it in light of this message, I realized also the same with social media. If you derive your identity from the social media, and not in Christ, not from Christ, then all the likes will go to your head. And all the angry emoji will affect your heart. And I pray that instead of becoming a fake version of yourself online, I pray that we will really reach out to these people as salt of the earth and light of the world and build the bridge, not the body. Let us pray.